Who would think it's a good idea to sell airplane food at home? And worse than that, who would be stupid enough to actually buy it? This is gonna be a very interesting unboxing, but this is a first class airplane meal. And like, this is as real as it gets. It comes from British Airways, and it was made by an actual chef who makes the first class meals from planes. In my personal opinion, airplane food, regardless of whether it's first class or coach, it always lacks a little bit of flavor. I don't know if it's from being up in the air or something like that. I was gonna try to do a very pretty unboxing, but my fridge has basically ruined the whole back of this. It's all wet and fully apart so what you don't see on camera on YouTube videos. I swear my fridge has never done anything like that but well <laughs> let's see what's on the inside. I don't even know how to open this. Oh wait a second. Oh, oh. <laughs> wow. Ooh, guys fasten your seat belts. Do I have to cook it? Oh no. Oh no 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 no. But wait a minute, I got a first class boarding pass? This doesn't make up for the fact that I actually have to make this myself. Oh boy. We're definitely gonna need this. I'm gonna show you everything individually, but this is branded from British Airways. This is their very own sparkling wine. I'm pretty sure you can get that in coach as well. Thought it'd be champagne or something, but guess not. Good news is it comes with 10% on my next flight, which honestly, this kind of makes this whole thing worth it. That is how I pictured myself for this video until I found out that I have to make it myself. Inside you'll find some of the ingredients and recipes that are served in our first cabin, so you can enjoy our most popular starters, main courses, and desserts from home. You can share your dining experiences. I'm not sharing anything, I paid for this, so you don't get a hashtag, you don't get an ad, you don't get nothing if I'm gonna have to make my own food. They didn't have many options on the website, but I kind of chose the menu myself. So we start with a whole grain salad with asparagus. Then our main course is a slow cooked British beef. Then we got a cheese spread, which is a, uh, I don't even know how to pronounce this. And then for dessert, we're getting a dark chocolate and orange liqueur bread and butter pudding. If it looked like that, I'd be happy. It's not going to look like that. The price for this box was 100 pounds. I thought it was worth it because I didn't know I had to cook it. Now, I don't even know how I feel about any of this. So it Comes with vegetables, loads of parsley and herbs, one lemon. Is this supposed to be like a aubergine or something? It's so ridiculously small and I'm pretty sure there's fungus growing on it. Nothing screams first class meal like a canned chickpeas in salted water, olive oil. Is this an emergency blanket? Because I think I'm gonna need it. I think inside here is our food. This is so weird. So right here we've got Ooh, this is heavy. This one is the bread and butter pudding, the beef cheeks. This is the same thing. I think they sent enough for two people. This is hummus and creme fraiche. A little bag of vanilla sauce, one onion, what I'm assuming is vinegar, asparagus. They could have sent a whole thing of garlic, but they sent one tiny piece of garlic. These are beluga lentils. Quinoa? Quinoa? I'm no doctor, but this vegetable, it's not doing good. Time of death? Uh... 11.55. I'm trying to be very organized about this, so I kind of laid all the ingredients out just to make sure that we don't forget anything, because some of these are essential ingredients. These bigger containers are basically the things that are already pre-made. These are like sauces and things like that. Those are all the vegetables that are gonna need a lot of cooking. And then on this side, I've got the recipe. There's 15 steps here. I could have just went and bought groceries and just bought these menus. I actually think if you have a date or something, especially in current times, when there's not many places open, restaurants are closed. This could be really cute, like a romantic night in. I almost threw up in my mouth. Now for me, this is not an activity. I'm just hungry. So step number one is to cook the kin... I don't know how to pronounce this. Quinoa, quinoa. I'm gonna bleep it every time. I'm just gonna say something really rude and bleep it every time. Rinse the in a sieve with cold water, place in a small saucepan with 160 ml of water, bring to a boil, then cover with the lid and lower the heat to simmer for 15 minutes. So we're gonna place the quinoa on here and we're supposed to rinse this in water. I just don't understand why we gotta make so much of it if we're only gonna use four tablespoons. All right, this is done and into the pot. 
So I'm gonna let this simmer for 15 minutes and also we're supposed to preheat the oven. No salt and pepper. This is plain food after all. So this is like cooking, kind of. I think it's supposed to do this for 15 minutes. The step number two is to cook the aubergine. It says trim the stalk of the aubergine, then slice each one into quarters so they resemble wedges. Salt, pepper, garlic. Okay, at least we got some seasoning and roast for 12 to 15 minutes. We're only using one of the aubergines because is this an aubergine? Okay, I gotta go find Google Images. The other aubergine is moldy, like it's really weird. Even this one is kind of moldy already, but I don't know, this is vegetables, it can happen. It was all inside one box, but I'm still gonna eat it. And obviously we're gonna make a little bit less, but because this is only for me, it will be fine. So we're gonna slice this into quarters so that it looks like potato wedges which it does, except a lot sadder. I was kind of upset at this, but this is actually, it's not, it's not that bad so far. As long as I don't have to cook the main ingredients, I'm consciously switching my mood about this. Like I want this to actually go well. So we need garlic, ginger, and two tablespoons of oil. So I'm gonna shake the olive oil. I think the olive oil is like chunky because it's not supposed to be in the fridge, but it should taste the same. So we're gonna, ooh, that was quite a lot of olive oil. It's gonna be fine. So this is the crushed garlic that they sent. I'm gonna put the crushed garlic on top. I have no idea how much, if we're gonna need this for other stuff, well. And the crushed ginger basically came already open, which is a little bit weird. So I'm just gonna use the other end. Okay. So I think I'm supposed to use my hands for this. So we're going to massage this in. I'm not mad about this and also my hands smell incredible. So I'm gonna put this in the oven for 12 to 15 minutes and this is actually going surprising well. Oh wait, oh my lentils are burning. So this is gonna be fine. So the quinoa is basically cooked. I mean it smells pretty good. It's a bit watery but I'm gonna let it just evaporate a little bit. The aubergines are finishing cooking, so we can move on to the next step, preparing the red peppers, which I think come already prepared. So this should be a very easy one. In these little containers, they basically sent some already grilled red peppers. So I'm just gonna put it in here. So to this, we're gonna add a little bit of garlic. It literally just says a tiny little bit, no official amount, a little bit of ginger, which we're kind of running out because I'm trying not to use that gross. I think this is one teaspoon of oil. And this is basically the dressing for everything. <laughs> Red pepper is officially done. No particularly exciting, but I'm just happy that we got this out of the way. Next up, we're cooking the asparagus. So trim three asparagus spears three inches from the tip. So like here, one inch, two inch, three inches. Yeah, that seems about right. <laughs> I don't know what that means. So we're supposed to get three of these only. Three inches. How much is... How much is one inch in centimeters? It's 2.54 centimeters. One, two, three. That's three inches, right? So I think this we're supposed to... Chop the rest of this... Oh... Okay. So this is supposed to be one centimeter long. So that's about... One centimeter, right? What am I supposed to do with all of this? If I wanted groceries, I would have gone to the supermarket. Oh, wait a second, I've done something wrong. Trim three asparagus spears three inches from the tip. What's a tip? This is the tip of the asparagus, right? Now I understand why they send so many because I am stupid and I can't read. One inch, two inches, three inches. So I cut it right here, then slice these spears in half lengthways. I think I'm gonna end up with the same that I've done on the first one, but I wanna make sure we're getting this right. Okay, and by the way, this should be finished cooking soon. I'm gonna keep this on low for now. Oh, I get this. So this was what we we're supposed to get. <laughs> With the leftover, we're supposed to cut the end, throw that away, and then these into one centimeter. Let me do this with the other two, and we're just gonna forget that that ever happened. These are supposed to be cut in half, because we're gonna fry these individually. Instead of throwing them away, these are supposed to be cut into one centimeter pieces. I think this is what they mean, hopefully. I don't know, I'm gonna cook these now. So I'm gonna add some olive oil in our frying pan. Wow, that's like a lot, but... So in first place, I think we're supposed to cook these for 30 seconds on each side. So this is supposed to be quite hot. 
Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, there we go. These are definitely been cooked. Oh, this actually looks kind of good. It's a bit toasty, but in a good way. And now I'm gonna switch the heat back on and we're supposed to cook these for three minutes because they're a little bit more chunky. And by the way, our aubergine is definitely cooked. So I've just switched it off. There's one tiny bit here that is so big that it's kind of bothering me. So I'm gonna... Oh, I just want to show you that these look incredible. Look at that color. That is beautiful. But this is our roasted aubergine. Would you look at that? It smells even better than it looks. This is surprisingly coming together. Like we've got so many different elements ready. I'm gonna show you. I do have to say that not only they lied to me because they made it seem like there was not gonna be a lot of cooking involved. They also lied that this should only take 60 minutes and I swear I've been here for like two hours. We've got the roasted peppers, the asparagus, roasted aubergine, which probably looks the best out of everything and also the lentils, which was the very first thing that we've made. Okay, so the next step is mix the whole grains. Drain the chickpeas and beluga lentils. So we need to drain something, if I got this correct. If you're paying the ridiculous prices of flying first class, I hate to break it to you, your food still comes from a can. So I'm gonna drain, I'm gonna just drain it like that. Beluga lentils. I have no idea if that's where they intended with draining, but that's the way we've done it. This is when it becomes a bit more recipe because we gotta mix some of the things that we've already made. So I think I'm gonna grab maybe a bowl and we're gonna do it on there. If I remember correctly, we need four tablespoons of the quinoa. One, two, three, four. Then one third of the chickpeas. How do I measure one third? Well, your guess is as good as mine. We need five tablespoons of the lentils, which thankfully come from a can. One, four, and five. I'm hoping this is gonna look like a first class meal eventually, but like so far, I mean, we're not quite there yet, but I believe. One tablespoon of olive oil, which makes sense, because this is supposed to be kind of like a salad, I think. And salt and pepper. I think this is the first time they're asking for salt and pepper, so. I'm gonna be generous. Isn't it like a thing that when you're high up in the air, you can't taste things, so they need to season it double? Well, I season it double regardless of the altitude. Just changed my mind, I'm gonna do a little bit more salt. <laughs> If I can't taste the ocean, it's not good enough. Step number six, and this is the most horrifying step so far, is assemble the salad. So we're basically gonna do the presentation for our starter. So we're supposed to recreate this right here. This is our image for reference. It's not a great image for reference. Like you can barely see it. It's very blurry. First thing is spoon the hummus into the center of two plates. I'm only doing one plate, but obviously we've got enough for two dishes. British Airways first class hummus and creme fraiche. This is what they use in planes, but I just want to show you something. This is supposed to be a vacuum to make it like last longer. So there's a little area here where you can peel it off, but these are not actually fully sealed. It just sort of comes out from literally the very top. Do you see? That's not supposed to happen. The packaging of this is terrible, which explains why so many things are already bad. I don't really care. I don't mind, but I can see how some people would be pretty disturbed by this. So we're going to spoon this on a 10 centimeter circle. Hummus is just not something that particularly excites me, but I'm gonna be honest, I think they add cream or something. So this is supposed to be a 10 centimeter circle. Oh, it smells really good. So that's around 10 centimeters, right? Imagine being a flight attendant and you have to spread a 10 centimeter circle of hummus. I'm like, we are on a metal cage being thrown from one side of the globe to the other. Do I really have to spread the hummus? I'm pretty sure they've got more things to worry about. Buy a bag of Doritos and Duty Free? I don't know. Spoon the quinoa salad on top of the hummus. Oh man, I'm really nervous about this. It's okay, it's fine. I'm gonna do little by little. Put the red peppers go on top. Oh man, I really don't wanna ruin this. Ugh! No! It's fine. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. So on top of this goes two aubergine slices. They're so chunky. Oh man, it looks, ugh, why is it sliding? It looks fine, right? It looks great. Okay, so now we're gonna place some of the asparagus kind of in there in the center, one on the back. And then, this is the bit that I'm really nervous about. We're supposed to put these 
Turns out I love this whole process. I cannot believe it's actually staying. I really hope that I'm filming this in a way that it does justice because in real life we've never done anything even remotely close. This is the photo and this is what we've done. So last but not least is to decorate it with some pea shoots. So we're gonna try to place this maybe in the center. I don't even know where to put it. Should we do one here? Oh, that kind of looks pretty actually next to the hummus. If I told myself years ago when I was making cooking videos that I could ever accomplish this, I would be so surprised. I mean, we could throw in some more pea shoots, but I actually think it looks fine without it. You look great already. I'm just gonna pull an influencer and take a photo of this in front of a green screen and pretend I'm flying first class. I love flying Kylie Air. This is beautiful from every possible angle. I wish we had a better background. I'm gonna need to Photoshop a private plane. I hope that you guys already got a satisfying close-up of this because I am not going to ruin this for the camera. Apart from the hummus, everything was made by us. So we're gonna move on to the main, but I cannot wait to taste this. I was gonna say who would have thought, but honestly, nobody. Literally, not a single person. Moving on to the main, these first three steps are basically how to make a chimichurri sauce. Take the leaves from the parsley and coriander, get rid of the socks, and finally chop it. So we're gonna start with preparing the herbs. I don't think anything bad happens if you leave some of the stalks, so I'm not being that careful. And here we've got uh, parsley, which is different from coriander. Of course, I knew that. Two completely different herbs. Like, it would be stupid if someone in the world thought that they were the same. It doesn't really say the amounts. Are we serious supposed to use all of this? I mean, I guess the chimichurri sauce is basically all herbs, right? We're supposed to chop this really thinly. Let me try to use my finger technique that I saw from a Gordon Ramsay video. Again, from a different direction. I have no idea what I'm doing. Ooh, there's a ringing in my ear. Probably my higher self saying out of all paths. This is the one I chose. This is really good, actually. I'm happy with this. I think this is gonna make a really good chimichurri sauce. Cut one centimeter ring from my shallot. Once again, I knew that. I didn't think this was just a skinny onion. So we're supposed to cut a one centimeter ring and then chop it together with the garlic. This is definitely not fresh anymore, but I don't know until we cut into it. No, this is actually fine. So one centimeter ring. So we're supposed to chop this really thinly. Maybe I'm gonna cut it and then sort of go. This seems fine. We also need the garlic. So it says that we can either crush it or... Right, so this is fine. And that's base, ooh. It's not the onion, it's how tragic my videos are. <laughs> That's what's making me cry. It also asks to chop some red peppers, but I just realized I used all the red peppers for the dish from before, but I'm still gonna chop it. It's just got a little bit of garlic and ginger. It's pretty much mush at this point, so. So this is officially all the ingredients for our chimichurri. This was actually kind of fun. So, so we need all the herbs that we made, which I don't even know if we should use all of them. That's quite a lot. This is like a bowl of Gwyneth Potra's breakfast. We need about half of the shallot, the whole of the garlic. It's like making a potion here. Looking good. Half a bottle of olive oil. This is why chimichurri sauce tastes so good. I'm learning so much in this video. This is the most eventful flight of my life. One tablespoon of lemon juice, which by the way, we've got here one lemon. They sent it as well. One tablespoon is actually quite a lot, so. And one quarter of the cider vinegar. So they also sent this little uh, container of cider vinegar. Okay, I spilled one quarter, so we don't have as much as I would have hoped for. Then the world's tiniest amount of red chili flakes. So that goes in as well. And I think this might be the last ingredient, which is some oregano. That's a lot of oregano. And this is officially our chimichurri sauce, which I'm going to mix with an oversized spoon. I am running out of everything. It's a little on the solid side. It's more like a chimichurri paste. Wait a minute, we forgot about the red pepper. I'm gonna add some of my own olive oil because I clearly made too much of it. Okay, now that feels like a chimichurri sauce. This is very exciting because 
Now, let me double check. I think we get to finally open the main, like the main course, which is the beef cheeks with the potato gratin. The already cooked. Oh, that smells really good. It smells like cornbread. And this is like a chunk of beef that's been slow cooked. It's quite tough for something that's been slow cooked. It feels like really good quality meat. And you know, this is not like, I don't really care what I say in this video. Like if it was bad, I would tell you. And this right here is supposed to be the potato gratin. You can see the little layers of potato in it. It's got lapinos and cheese on top, which makes this smell like pizza. So we've got the same on this one. And this is so annoying to cook because he asks us to cook this in a sous vide, sous vide. If I got this right, it's by boiling it in water inside this bag, which first of all, we need to place the potatoes in the oven for 10 minutes. All right. So we've got a little tray and I'm just gonna put the potatoes in here. I don't think we need the parchment paper. This is a very small amount of potatoes. That's my only criticism of the dish. Look at this potato one. This one is a lot toastier than this one. I mean, on camera, it doesn't really seem that way. In real life, that's like two completely different colors, which is a good thing, I guess. It really shows that someone actually made it. This is gonna go in the oven for 10 minutes. So while that cooks for 10 minutes, we're gonna go to the scary part, which is cooking this in a sous vide style or sous vide. Is it sous vide? No, vide. No, that's something completely different. Fill and boil your kettle, reheat your 48 hour slow cooked beef. So I'm gonna put my boiling water in here. Okay, so we're supposed to put this in, like the meat. Is it not gonna melt? So this is supposed to cook for six to eight minutes. Oh, that's not good. This next step is a bit weird, but I'm pretty sure I'm reading this correctly. We're supposed to remove like the, the ends of the broccoli and then basically cook that together with the plastic. I don't know how sanitary that is, but this is definitely a step. So I'm appreciating the fact that this will make this quicker. So this should cook in here for around, I would say eight more minutes. I'm gonna get the potatoes out. Oh, they're hot, but they look, oh, that looks really good. Very, ouch. Then we're gonna get our broccoli out before it's overcooked and like mushy. I'm just gonna put it on this plate for now before we plate it, just to make sure we drain all the water. It doesn't smell like much because it's inside the bag, but Plastic is still there, so it did not melt. And we got the chimichurri sauce, which brings me to the most stressful and nerve-wracking part, which is plating once again. We've got a photo here of what it's supposed to look like, but it's not very clear. First of all, I'm gonna grab our potato. <gasps> it's stuck. I knew that was gonna happen. It's almost okay. This is going to be kind of the foundation of it. I'm like looking at the image and trying to figure it out. Then we're supposed to put some broccoli kind of just sitting like that, I think. It looks similar, maybe, I don't know. The next part is obviously to open and cut into the meat. So I might need scissors for this. I don't have any scissors, so we're just gonna have to go. Oh my God. Oh, that smells so good. Oh. So I'm gonna place this right here. It should probably be the other way around because it's not holding very well. Okay, I'm gonna place the other piece of meat on top of the broccoli. Oh my God, I have no idea how to do this. Oh. It's so soft that it's literally like falling apart. And then there's another piece of meat, but I have no idea how to stack it. I don't think it's gonna work. So I'm gonna grab some of that meat juice and we're gonna put it on top. Oh, that actually looks really good. This is actually really well thought. So I'm just gonna try to clean it up. I don't know if you guys can see the image, but that's pretty close. So the very final step is to add our chimichurri sauce, which is a little chunky, but I kind of understand why so that it sits on top. Okay. Oh, that looks so good. I mean, at least from this side. I thought it couldn't get much better than the first one, 
but I mean, this looks pretty incredible. This is me attempting to show you the image and what we've made side by side. The dessert, thankfully, it's basically only heating things up and then plating it, which is gonna be a lot easier. I would show you better angles and stuff, but I'm literally so scared. At this point, I refuse to believe how long I've been doing this for, but I mean, I really wanna get through this and see the final result. That's the only thing that's gonna make this whole thing worth it. So the dessert is basically, it starts with a cheese board with grapes and also a bread pudding. First thing we're gonna do is warm up the pudding because it takes around 15 minutes. That's... It smells like French vanilla custard. Okay, so I've learned my lesson. This is supposed to go in the oven with the baking. <gasps> It's chocolate chip. Oh my God, this is beautiful. I'm gonna put this in a little baking tray with the actual parchment paper. So this is supposed to go in the oven for 15 minutes just to warm up. The pudding also comes with this British Airways first class vanilla sauce, which is actually like a ridiculous amount of vanilla sauce, but the way to heat this up is to just put it in any kind of container on a bowl and we're gonna pour some warm water. So they said that it doesn't have to be boiling, just warm enough so that it warms up the sauce. So, so in this box is the cheese and garnish. Very exciting different types of cheeses. So in here we've got grapes and also all types of cheeses. This one looks like just a really good buttery cheese that I am definitely going to enjoy. And this one, scary on the outside, soft on the inside. Basically the opposite of me. I don't know if you care, but it doesn't come with the wood board, so you kind of have to own it yourself if you want it to look exactly like this. So I'm gonna try to place this in the same way, but obviously keep in mind that my cheese board is a little bit bigger. I'm looking at the image and I still can't figure out what this is supposed to look like, so... There's that. We're gonna sprinkle some grapes around, which is what they've done in the image. I mean, this is the smallest amount of anything so far. This is supposed to be the chutney for the, on the image, the chutney is kind of spread in the front, but we don't even have enough to spread. Like this is literally a little pooplet. You might be flying first class, but we ain't made of money. If you're interested, this is what the cheese board looks like on the expectation. I mean, it's as close as we could get considering my wood board is a lot bigger. This is not something that I would be very excited about if I was flying first class. I like cheese, but I would be very scared for everyone else using the toilet. Oh my god, that smells like cookie dough, French toast, pancakes, golden syrup, anything. It's like all desserts put into one. Finishing it off in the oven for like 10 minutes was a game changer because it's like soggy but also it's got some crispy bits to it so if everything goes according to plan we're supposed to have that bread and butter pudding presentation which i don't know i can't even figure out how they did this so the first thing we need is the vanilla sauce which we uh, it's not very warm but you know what at this point it is what it is i'm gonna start oh this oh, it's so nice and creamy They can do that with flavor? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I think I just tasted vanilla for the first time in my life. So looking at the image, I think we should start with just like some of the custard in the bottom. It is so thick. I was expecting this to be super watery. So oh, this is so difficult without breaking. I'm just gonna go for it. Then in this little pot, it comes with some um, extra decoration, which is three pieces of orange or tangerine or whatever this is. One, then one raspberry, which we're gonna place here. And then it comes with a mint leaf in water, just like that. <laughs> it looks so good. This is our first class dessert. And I'm not gonna lie this, I think when I taste it, it's gonna make me forget about the fact that this whole thing is a bit of a scam. <laughs> Either side, you look at it, it's truly doing justice. I cannot wait to show you guys the full spread because we kind of managed to create this. A whole lot of dishes, like I cannot believe how insane this looks. What I also can't believe is how insane this looks. I actually need to do a side-by-side -side with the photos from their website for the starter, for the main, dessert, 
even the cheese board, because I actually think for once it is possible to accomplish. On their website, they make it seem like you're literally putting this in a microwave, when in reality, this is very much not putting anything in the microwave. I'll put myself in the microwave if I ever have to go through this. In my videos, I always tell you what I think, and I don't really care if British Airways is gonna put me on a no-flight list or something. I had a great time, but I wasn't ready for this. If you're expecting like a restaurant takeout kind of experience, this is not it. This is a full-on activity. If you've got friends over, maybe a romantic date, I can see how this would be interesting. In full honesty, I ended up enjoying this a lot. This was a great experience. I loved it, but it was a lot. So it's been a lot of time of waiting. So this is our salad. I'm gonna try to get a little bit of everything. Chick you know, the whole thing. Wow. No words, guys. I think I paid a hundred pounds for this whole thing, which now that I'm looking at it like this, I find this really worth it. This is like a 15 out of 10 kind of starter. I've been to like expensive Gordon Ramsay restaurants, I think this is better. I'm gonna try a little bit of everything. This potato gratin. I can't pronounce it, but I can taste it. I don't even know what to say. It did say slow cooked, but... This is so good. Please someone... I'm not an experienced first class flyer, so... Someone please let me know in the comment section, does it always taste like this? I've never been served anything even remotely close to this. I don't even know what to say, guys. I'm just gonna sit here and enjoy this. It's so good. Weirdly, I think I enjoy that a tiny little bit more, but this is... First of all, the presentation on this is truly incredible. I kind of tried to look at the images, but... I'm gonna be honest, the sauce, for example, it's such a good consistency that it makes this whole thing really easy. I thought this was a dumb idea because I didn't realize that plain food could taste like this. A whole different story. I feel completely different about this whole video. The fact that this is a chocolate chip pudding and not raisins, British Airways know what they're doing. Like, Honestly, the only thing I can think is, this is possible? <laughs> When did these flavors come out? This has existed for the whole of my existence. Dark chocolate chip, a really milky, crispy, soggy, I don't even know. I feel even better for the fact that I made this. I think I did a full 180. This is a great idea. I think it's a great price and I never say that. Like I always think everything's too expensive and it would amount to like $50 a person. But he also provides an experience so you don't have to, like if you're going to the movies, this is like the movies, a horror movie. So taking that in consideration and the quality of this, the fact that you still get a lot of lentils left over, a bottle of sparkling wine as well. I actually think this is a pretty good deal. I think it's supposed to come with some crackers. I cannot find them. I've literally looked everywhere. I think they might have forgotten. This cheese is so creamy and white. It has no flavor. I'm gonna dip it in the chutney in this microscopic amount and just eat it like that. This was worth everything. I'm eating asparagus, guys. I'm a fully new person. Disclaimer before I go, I'm not being paid by anyone to make this. I spent my own money on this. These are my actual thoughts. In fact, I actually wanted to not like this because of the fact that I had to cook most of the things. I wasn't fully aware that that was part of it. I think it would be a lot of fun if we did this again, but instead of being a first class meal, just a regular plain meal, maybe do a side by side. Give the video a like if you guys would like to see that. Maybe we could recreate this whole meal, but instead if you're a flying coach and going from this video to that, that'd be incredible. You know what to do if you want to watch that. Also guys, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe and switch my notifications on. There's a subscribe button and a little bell and as usual a very very special thank you i always make sure to thank the people who've got my notifications on separately because you truly make these videos possible i don't have like a separate platform i found that the best way for people to support my content freely is just by putting the notifications on because i know if i create a new series or make a part two that you will know about it you will be notified so a huge thank you for making this possible i love you guys and i will see you on my next video bye, -bye.